Hello everyone, my name is Hector Fajardo and I'm a master's student at the School of Plant, Environmental and Soil Sciences at Louisiana State University, LSU. The title of my presentation is Evaluation of NDVI for Predicting Cover Crop Biomass and Nutrient Uptake. Sugarcane is a major part of Louisiana's economy. More than 400,000 acres are produced every year. With this in mind, it is important to make cane production more sustainable. Cane is, plant, is replanted every four years. This implies a great risk of soil degradation and yield decline. After last harvest on fall or winter, there comes a period of follow and even after cane is planted, there is little uh, vegetation covering the soil. From a soil, health from a soil health perspective, extending the growing season with vegetation cover has the potential to improve soil properties. Cover crops grow during the fallow and take up nutrients. That on the other hand would be lost if there, if there were no plants on it. Those nutrients would be released during uh, the composition after cover crop termination. Now we can see some images between fields with cover crops and no cover crops. Uh, another image where we can see uh, how we planted uh, the sugar cane and, and where, is, where the cover crops are placed. Furthermore, new methods to determine cover crop biomass and nutrient uptake are essential to enhance the adoption of this practice. A non-destructive and easy way is by using vegetation indices through remote sensing. These indices can estimate plant biomass and nutrient uptake. The more known and common index is the NDVI, which stands for normalized Difference Vegetation Index, which is typically computed based on the reflectance from near-infrared and visible light. This is the radio of the difference between near-infrared and red to the sum of the near-infrared and the red band. The objective of this project is to evaluate the use of NDVI measured by ground-based sensor and based on aerial images for predicting cover crop biomass and nutrient uptake. Data was collected from several ongoing experiments on planting method and seeding rates, which results in different cover crop stands. The experiments were established at LSU Accenter Sugar Research Station in St. Gabriel, Louisiana. Sugarcane was planted in October of 2019, while cover crops were planted in November of the same year. The treatment structure of, of those experiments were a two by three factorial arrangement in a completely randomized design. The treatments included three seeding rates which were the recommendation from the NRCS, half of the recommendation and a quarter of the recommendation, and two planting methods, broadcast versus drilling. In these experiments, uh, we use a mix of five species of cover crops. Three of them were legumes and two were brassicas. The species were hairy vetch, crimson clover, balanza clover, tillage radish, and rapeseed. Two sensors were used. The first one is a multispectral camera. In this case, we use a MicaSense Red HM camera mounted on a DJI Phantom 4 advanced drone. This sensor has five bands. It has the red, the red edge, and the near infrared bands, where we can compute the NDVI. 
The second sensor is a ground-based sensor, in this case, TwinSeeker, developed by Trimble. Similarly, it has four, band, four bands, but in this case, we obtain three red bands and one near infrared. It is good to mention that the first one is a passive sensor and the second one is an active sensor. The active ones emits its own light, while the passive one uses light from the sun. For the cover crop biomass collect collection, we use the quadrant frame method. First, we place the quadrant randomly in each plot, then capture the green seeker the green seeker data, then move the quadrant to, to a next position and get the green seeker data until we finish the site. After that, we fly the drone to capture the aerial images. Then we enter to the field with clippers to remove the above ground biomass. And also we get the roots from the radish and the rapeseed from each quadrant. We separate each species and put it in paper bags. Next, we place uh, red panels in each quadrant where biomass have been taken and fly the drone for, for the second time. Here we can see the aerial image with the panels in the field. This, this was made to establish the exact, the exact points where quadrant frame was established. So we can compare more precisely the green seeker with the aerial images. For the analysis of aerial images, first we prepare the flight plan on drone deploy. Then we build the ortho mosaic on PIX4D. And finally, the mass extraction and later processing was done on QGIS. GreenSeeker gave us the average NDVI value for each quadrant. From there, averages per plot were obtained. The nutrient content from the cover crop biomass was done by carbon nitrogen dry combustion method and plant digestion multi-element analysis by ICP. For the dry combustion, we use 20 milligrams of sample from each species per plot. And in the same way, we use 0.5 grams for the, from the digestion method with nitric acid and hydrogen peroxide. Now I will show you the results that we obtained. Here we can see the correlation between NDVI from aerial images and NDVI from the green seeker. As we can see, the correlation was strong, as expected. The, the coefficient of determination is good, with a value of 0 0.7. So from the correlation, we can state that NDVI from the green seeker can explain around 70% of the variation of NDVI from the aerial images. Next, we can see the correlation between the cover crop dry biomass and both sensors. On the left, we have the aerial images, and on the right, we have the graph for the green seeker. In both cases, we obtain good correlations. Dry biomass uh, average was of 700 pounds per acre, with values ranging from 240 to 1300 pounds per acre. In the same way, now we can see the correlation for N uptake with less favorable performance, but with a good correlation. In this case, NDVI from the Green Seeker obtained a better correlation compared with the uh, aerial images with a square R of 0 0.46 to uh, the one with uh, aerial images of 0 0.29. And content in the cover crop biomass was on average of 
around 12 pounds per acre with a maximum value of 24 and a minimum value of 5. Moreover, for micronutrient uptake. Here in this table, we can see the nutrient, the average content in pounds per acre, the correlation coefficients, and the square R. NDVIs had better, corre uh, had better correlations for phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur compare it with the ones with magnesium and calcium. In this case, uh, the better correlations were around 0 0.4 compared with the less correlated nutrients. In the case of micronutrient uptake, in general, the correlation between NDVIs and micronutrient uptake were weak. However, we uh, some micronutrients were, were better correlated. In this case, borom and molybdenum uptake were the, were the most correlated ones. In conclusion, NDVIs from both green seeker and aerial images can be used to predict cover crop biomass. Also, both NDVIs had a good correlation with nitrogen uptake along with some macronutrients, as phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur, and some micronutrients, as boron and molybdenum. Additional data points will be collected to strength, and, to strength the database and make it more robust before we establish the predictive models of cover crop biomass and nutrient uptake. Finally, I want to acknowledge uh, my major advisor, Dr. Tubana, the soil fertility team, LSU Accenter uh, Sugar Research Station, the American Sugar Cane League, the Taylor Foundation, and the Bolivian government, who are uh, the founders and sponsors of my studies and this project. Hope you like the presentation and thank you for choosing to watch it. Stay healthy and safe. Bye.